Good morning, church family. It is good to see you all today. How has everybody been? Enduring the heat? <laughs> you know, uh, I've, I had heard that Salem had pretty moderate weather. And so, in moving here, uh, we did not buy an air conditioner. <laughs> um, and I'll just say this, we wish we had. <laughs> but uh, it's cooler now. Uh, hopefully it lasts for a while. Can I share with you all something that I am just so excited about? Um, I am excited about Livingston Academy and what God is going to be doing there this coming year. Ludell mentioned this uh, in, her, in her prayer here a few minutes ago, but I spent the last few days, Wednesday through Friday, with a number of our student leaders. I see some of the parents out here. Um, our student leaders from our student association as well as campus ministries, um, their leaders are up there at Big Lake doing what they call a RAD leadership camp. And to put that in terms you and I would understand, it is leadership training through outdoor education. We spent the first few days when I was able to be there with them on stand-up paddle boards. We paddled a few miles down a lake pitch tent and taught these kids um, all sorts of things. Leave no trace principles, how to use the bathroom well in the woods, as well as pitching tent, camp cooking. And through this, we also did workshops on leadership, conflict resolution, self-care, and planning of events and such, along with worships and just a great experience to build this relationship, the relationships within this team. And uh, it was a privilege to be up there. And coming back, they're still up there right now. They're heading out on a backpacking trip for the remainder of the weekend where Chantel and I will be joining them uh, this afternoon. But please keep them in your prayers as they um, wrap up their, their leadership training up there and then come back and plan for the school year that is starting in just a few weeks. I'm sure that the teachers in the house are all too aware that we will be starting soon. I'm excited to share with you all today uh, a topic that's passionate, uh, that I am passionate about. Uh, and the title of my sermon today is The Evolution of Sabbath. And I hope that that title makes sense uh, as we study and discuss together today. Um, before we do that, let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to invite you to be here with us. We ask that you would lead and guide in this message that the words would be your words and not mine and that we would come to know you better and to understand all that the Sabbath is meant to be for us um, through our topic today. Thank you for being here. Amen. It had been going on for over a year. Out of a relatively insignificant place, something occurred that was different from anything anyone had ever seen before. The odds, well, the odds were against them, but they pressed on. Finally, the core ideas, the foundations for the United States of America were put on paper. And on July 4, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was formally adopted by the Continental Congress. Soon, July 4 was set aside as a national holiday, and every year on this day, Americans pause. It's a day to look back and celebrate, to honor the sacrifices of our founders, and to think about the incredible gift they have given us, freedom. It had been going on for six days, out of nothing. Out of absolute insignificance, God caused something to occur that was different than anything anyone had ever seen before. No one, under, no one else understood what God was doing, but he did it anyway. Finally, the foundations of the earth, the firmament, the sun, the moon, animals, plants, and then people were created through the sixth day. And this world was declared complete. It was declared good. This day, 
the Sabbath, was set aside as an international, I guess you could say, interworld holiday. And on each week, people of God around the world pause. It's a day to look back, to celebrate, and to honor the work of our God, to worship and spend time with Him, growing in a personal creator-creation relationship. This was God's perfect plan. But I'd like for us today to imagine a scenario. Imagine it's July 4, the year 2050. The situation in the United States has greatly changed. Here and there, you might hear fireworks being shot off. There might be a few celebrations, but they are few and far between and half-hearted, to say the least. Why? Because the freedom that was being celebrated for centuries on this day is now no longer a reality. Sure, you might say there's still some point in honoring and celebrating July 4 for the freedom that we had, but this incredible gift that we received through immense sacrifice is lost. Imagine that. July 4 would have lost some significance, would it not? This is what happened when Adam and Eve sinned. Creation was still there. God was still there. But it was no longer perfect. Creation was tainted. The perfect creation that couldn't help but only point back to its creator was now twisted. And this arrow that had pointed straight back to God was now really warped. Yes, God was still there. But he was forced to be, be at a distance because of sin. The Sabbath was meant to be a day when creator and creation met together in a setting that accentuated the beauty of this relationship. But now, both the setting and the relationship that was meant to be celebrated and grown were damaged to the core. Just like that, the Sabbath fell far from God's intended plan for it. It fell far from God's intended plan. Question. Have you ever found, have you ever found yourself in a similar situation? When through decisions and choices and life, you realize that you have fallen so far from God's intended plan, where something that could have been amazing has been damaged to the point where it seems irreparable. Maybe it's in the realm of purity, mental, spiritual purity, relational purity. You feel like you are so far off track that you might as well give up on the whole thing. It's irreparable. And it's in times like these that we think of the passage, all things work together for good, and we wonder, that can't apply. But this passage is true. I want to tell you and me today, no matter how far off track we may feel and may, may be, no matter how far off track we may be, there is no situation irreparable in the eyes of God. God will make all things work together for good. Nothing is irreparable to God. And as God looked at the Sabbath and how far it had fallen, he didn't give up on it. And he will not give up on you or me. But what did God do? If we continue in our Bibles, soon God establishes the children of Israel and we think, ah, there's hope, but what happens to them? Pretty soon they fall into bondage and they're slaves in Egypt. And it would seem 
after 400 years of slavery in a pagan land, that the Sabbath is just completely lost. And that's what God addresses in Exodus chapter 20. He calls them together, and in the Ten Commandments, he says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For in six days, the Lord created the heavens and the earth. He pulls back to that original Sabbath, and he says, Sabbath is still about a creator-creation relationship and a celebration of how amazing that is. Ah, but that's still tainted, isn't it? God knew that. And that's why in Deuteronomy 5, he takes the Sabbath to the next level. Turn with me in your Bibles there to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 12. This is a reiteration of the Sabbath commandment, yet it's a little bit different. It says, Deuteronomy 5 and verse 12, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord God commanded you. Six days you shall labor, do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your ox, your donkey, any livestock or any stranger within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. Sounds pretty familiar. Practically the same thing. But then the reason given... You shall do this. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. That is why, therefore, the Lord commands you to keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath. Initially, a celebration solely for the relationship between creation and creator has now been expanded. And we not only now celebrate this relationship, we celebrate redemption. Do you see how God took a Sabbath that had been shoved off far from the ideal and moved it and built upon it so that it was even more and means even more for you and I today? To go back to our comparison, this would be like another July 4, even farther down the road, where freedom has been regained. Now, what does July 4 mean? It means all that it meant before and so much more. Previously, there had been no need for redemption because there was no slavery to be freed from. But God took the horrible results of the fall and the results that it had on the Sabbath and he used it to make the Sabbath mean more. Now the Sabbath was a celebration of two things. Relationship between creation and creator and redemption. But soon something else wasn't quite right. Back to our scenario. Imagine an America founded on principles of freedom and the truth that all men are created equal. Imagine a country like this that no longer fought for freedom and equality for all. Though initially the U.S. may have stood for this idea that we are all endowed with certain inalienable rights like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Imagine, imagine an America that said this. Actually, only those within our borders who look a certain way, who speak our language, who are at a certain place in their education or career, only they are welcome here. Only they will we offer our freedoms to. Wouldn't a July 4 in an exclusive America like this be nothing short of hypocritical? How could you celebrate freedom while withholding it? This would show that America is completely missing the concept of freedom. 
But what I just described is exactly what happened to the Sabbath. All too soon, those who had an intimate, first-hand experience with the grace of God and the freedom through Him turned their back on this very principle. They were the best. They were the ones with the Ten Commandments. They were the ones with redemption. They were the ones with freedom. They were the ones who had been saved, not anyone else. They were the ones who had been made whole. We see that this was an issue like in Isaiah 58, where God, through the prophet Isaiah, says, you guys keep all the law, but you're missing the point. You're missing the point. The Sabbath had become a unique trademark. Though the Sabbath stood as a celebration of the freedom that God offers all, the Jews twisted it so that it actually prevented people from experiencing redemption and from experiencing that relationship with their Creator and Savior. This was nothing short of hypocritical. The Sabbath was again skewed by the devil. It was undermined and distorted. So what happened? Jesus happened. Turn with me in your Bibles to, to Mark chapter 3. We're going to look here at a story and then one other story. Understand that this is the understanding of the law. This is the Sabbath that Jesus is coming into in his culture. And we pick up in Mark 3 verse 1. He, and, and it says, Again he entered the synagogue. And a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, the Pharisees, the rest of them in the room, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? To save life? or to kill. But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart. They had got it so wrong. And he wanted to address that. So he turns back around, grieved at their hardness of heart, and says to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out. And the hand was restored. And what happened? The Pharisees went out immediately, seeking a way to destroy him. Jesus was speaking to the issue. He was saying to the Jews, to the culture of the day, you have missed the point of the Sabbath. If you withhold the right of a relationship with God, and if you withhold a right of wholeness that God can offer, you are not keeping the Sabbath. And so God fixed it right then and there. But but once was not enough. Look in your Bibles one other place. Luke 13. It's another story. Book of Luke chapter 13. Verse 10. Again, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on Sabbath. And there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten up. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately, she was made straight and she glorified God. Now listen to this. The ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed but not on the Sabbath. And the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the, from the manger and lead it away to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham whom Satan bound for 18 years, be loosed, be freed, be made whole? 
from this bond. And he said these things. All his adversaries were put to shame. And all the others rejoiced at the glorious things that were done by him. Jesus was at the synagogue. And he set the Sabbath straight. He saw this woman who was messed up spiritually, messed up physically, and he said, I will free you. I will make you whole. I will offer you redemption. I will restore a creator-creation relationship on the Sabbath day. After all, that is what the Sabbath is all about. Freedom is to be offered and extended on the Sabbath day. Holding it to ourselves, holding that relationship with God as if we had it all together, holding the beautiful message of redemption to ourselves as if we were the only ones who had the truth, we're missing it. That is not what the Sabbath is about. Matthew 5:17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. Jesus is like, I'm not coming to get rid of the Sabbath. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill them. I have come to make the Sabbath all that it is supposed to be. And what, it is, what is it supposed to be? These three things. A celebration of a creator-creation relationship. A relationship with God. A celebration of the redemption that he has offered to us. A celebration of the cross. And thirdly, a day to extend that creator-creation relationship and that redemption to those who do not have it. The Sabbath is about these three things. Jesus says the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And I like this paraphrase the way I kind of understand this passage. The Sabbath is not a confining box you have to fit into. It is a gift box for you to open and enjoy. Let me say that one more time. It, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Meaning the Sabbath is not a confining box that you have to fit into, but is instead a gift box that you and I can open and enjoy. I would ask you this question. How is the Sabbath for you? Does it feel like everything it should be? I must admit, especially growing up, there were times when I couldn't wait for Sabbath to be over. Can anyone relate to that? Question. If on Sabbath, we are celebrating creation-creator relationships, redemption, and extending these to the world, why would we want that day to be over? If we were truly keeping the Sabbath as God intended it to be, we would live in a Sabbath approach to life all the time, keeping specifically the seventh-day Sabbath as a memorial to these three things. So how is the Sabbath for you? I, in the last few years, have wrestled with this because I feel that I am not experiencing Sabbath as I need to be and as I should. And it wasn't too long ago that it kind of all clicked in my mind, I think. Maybe not. We'll try it on for size here. Say it is my lovely wife's birthday, which it's not. It's actually my dad's birthday, but still. Say it's my dad's birthday. <laughs> it is my dad's birthday today. Say it's his birthday, and he's in town, which he's not. Um, but say he's in town. And I say, Dad, because it's your birthday, I'm going to take off work. Isn't that nice of me? Isn't that celebrating his birthday? Is it? What do you think? Is that celebrating his birthday? Absolutely not. Dad, I'm going to take off work. I'm going to go on a hike. You can stay here at home. I am not celebrating my dad's birthday. We celebrate not by what we don't do, but by what we do. All right? 
we do not celebrate the Sabbath by stopping, to, stopping work and by not going shopping. It's not keeping the Sabbath if we don't do something else instead. But the Sabbath for me all too often is, I'm not going to do this, 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 and this, missing the point that the reason that God in, in Exodus instructed us not to do this, this, and this is so that we are able to do this, this, and this. We are able to celebrate a creator-creation relationship. We are able to celebrate and focus on redemption. And we're able to take time where we might have been in the office to instead go out and spread the creator-creation relationship and spread redemption with the world. If we're not extending it, we're not keeping it at all. Does that make sense? We can only see the true beauty of the Sabbath and experience all that it is meant to be if we focus on the Sabbath on these three things. Creator-creation relationship, redemption, and sharing this with other people. I can only celebrate my dad's birthday if I take off work in order to spend time with him, to spend time taking him out to eat, taking him to play golf, where I would get creamed, but still. It's all about what we do on the Sabbath. Guys, if we talk about Sabbath as a day we don't do a bunch of things, we are missing the point. The Sabbath is about a day that we celebrate creation-creator relationships. So what does this look like for me personally? When I go into a Sabbath now, I am thinking, how can I celebrate on this day creator-creation relationship? I don't have to work. That's freed up a day to do this. That's the point of not working. How am I going to do that? I got to tell you, uh, growing up, for me, it was, it was always like, let's go on a hike. But let me tell you something. Going out on a hike where you are not deliberately focusing on Christ and the beautiful creation, if you're just going out on a hike to be in nature, that is also not keeping the Sabbath. But if I go out in nature with a deliberate focus on Christ to see the beauty he has created and to actually deliberately focus on that, boy, then I'm getting into this creation-creator relationship. The same might be said about hanging out with family stepping on maybe a few toes here. Sabbath is not just a family day. If, in, if, if you don't end the family time, focus on what God is doing in your family and focus on how he has saved you all as a family and how he wants to lead you into the future. The focus must be on creator-creation relationship. The focus must be on redemption. The focus must be on sharing it with others. Speaking about the redemption aspect of this, I actually just came across this quote from a, a fellow pastor who posted it on Facebook last night. I thought, well, how, how great is this timing? So I want to read it to you. It's by a, a famous, influential Old Testament scholar by the name of Walter Brugg, Brugman. Sabbath is about withdrawal from the anxiety system of Pharaoh. It is the refusal to let one's life be defined by production and consumption and the endless pursuit of private well-being. And I would say, instead of this, it is about focusing on a creator-creation relationship. Focusing on the redemption that God extends to both you and to me. And to realize, like the Jews completely missed, that he extends that to everybody else. So again, how was the Sabbath for you? I would like to encourage you, church family, to keep the Sabbath. Today, focus on your relationship with your Creator. Spend time thinking about and praising Him for the redemption He offers us. And then take some time to go out and share that with someone else. Deliberately, intentionally. We might call this outreach. 
The Sabbath is the day for this. On this Sabbath day, and every Sabbath day, may we truly keep the Sabbath. Not so much by focusing on what we should not be doing, but by doing all that we can to immerse ourselves in what the Sabbath is all about. A creator-creation relationship, the beautiful gospel of redemption, and the sharing of this good news with others. Amen.